12. Acts chapter number 12. Because another big lie that's out there right now is the lie that Easter is pagan. You know, not only do they say that Sunday is pagan, when it's the first day of the week where we worship the Son of Righteousness, the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's S-U-N, by the way, Malachi chapter 4. But there's a movement out there that wants to say that Easter is a wicked pagan holiday, and what they want you to celebrate instead is Passover. They want to they wanna get you on Passover instead of Easter. And they well, God gave us Passover, but, you know, what's this Easter about? And they'll try to tell you, well, Easter is Ishtar, or Easter is Ashtaroth, or whatever. Now, just because things kind of sound sort of the same doesn't mean they are. Because by that same logic, you could say, well, the book of Esther is pagan. Right. I mean, Esther sounds a lot like Easter, Ashtaroth, Ishtar. And you know what? Whatever you do, don't name your child Bill or Billy, because that's a lot like Baal. Right. You're naming your child after a false god, you know, if you call him Bill. But that's the stupidity of people who just, just they just make things up. that have no basis in reality. In fact, the word Easter has nothing to do with Ishtar or Ashtaroth or anything like that. No credible source. You know, oh, but I read about that in, you know, Alexander Hislop's Two Babylons or whatever. You know, that book, Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop, is a work of complete fiction. It is the biggest bunch of garbage I've ever seen in my life. Because you know what? That book was given to me, and I went into that book with an open mind. You know, oh, yeah, this is a great book. This really exposes the Catholic Church. Yeah, until you start fact-checking anything in it. And I fact-checked that book and found virtually everything in it to be a complete figment of the author's imagination. And you can't find it anywhere else. You can, you can go through stacks of books and you can go through all the literature and you'll never find any of that information anywhere else except in the, and it all just, and then you'll find all these people that are talking about it, but they're all going back. They're all getting it from that one place, you know. So we need to make sure that we're studying the Bible and making the Bible our final authority and not just getting into all this uh, rabbit hole of studying the mystery, religion, pagan, but because a lot of it is Jewish fables yeah. and false teaching. You know, for example, you'll hear people all the time talk about, oh, Nimrod. <laughs> Who's heard Nimrod villainized as being, you know, oh man, this, you know, the Nimrod religions of the mystery, pagan, you know, what? but here's the thing. You know what the Bible says about Nimrod? He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. That's all it says. <laughs> Sounds good to me. I mean, look if, the, it, look, if the Bible says Stephen Anderson was a mighty hunter before the Lord, I mean, I'd be, I'd, I'd be cool with that mention. <laughs> he began to be a great one in the earth. Isn't that terrible? And there, they, here's a, they'll spin this elaborate tale about Nimrod and hundreds and hundreds of pages about Nimrod this and Nimrod that and, and everything about Nimrod was on December 25th and it was, you know, and it, you know, whatever. And they'll go on and on. But when you go to the Bible, there's nothing like that. But here's what they'll say. Oh, here's the proof that all these hundreds of pages about Nimrod are true. Nimrod's mentioned in the Bible. There's the proof. Except he's mentioned positive. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I mean, it, you know, it's crazy. It is, it just look it up. Look up his name in the Bible. Mighty hunter before the Lord. Great one in the earth. Okay, that's not bad. But people just make things up, and we need to use the Bible as our authority. Now, the word Easter is a biblical word. You know, otherwise, I probably wouldn't even use it then. But it's actually a Bible word. Look at Acts chapter 12, and we'll see the word Easter. It says in verse 1, now about the time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James the brother of John with the sword, and because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Now, here, if we let the Bible define itself, this is the only time the word Easter is ever used in the Bible. If we allow the Bible to define itself, then Easter here is defined as the days of unleavened bread. Because he says, then were the days of unleavened bread, and so that's why he was going to wait until after 
Easter because it's referring to the same thing. Right. Same exact thing. Now, people try to say, oh, Easter here is a pagan holiday. It's so stupid because every, first of all, I speak a lot of foreign languages. That's a big hobby for me. And I've studied foreign languages all my life, especially since I was a teenager. And I've read the Bible cover to cover in like five languages, um, New Testament that is. I've only read the whole Bible cover to cover in about three. But I've read the, the New Testament cover to cover in five languages. And it's interesting because if you look at all the different New Testaments of the world and all the different Bible translations of the world, most of them, the vast majority of them, say Passover here. They don't say the word Easter. They just use the word Passover, whatever the word in that language is, okay? And the interesting thing, and, and, and in a Greek New Testament, that's what it says, Passover. So a lot of people have attacked the King James, okay, and said, this is a mistranslation here. This should say Passover. That's what a lot of people would attack the King James. And then the people who want to defend the King James, but that are unlearned, they will basically say, no, 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 this isn't the, pa this is a pagan holiday. And the, the King James, the only one who got it right. And all these other ones have it wrong. But in fact, both sides are, are very wrong here. Okay, because the reality is that the word Easter is an old English word that referred to the Passover and the entire Passover week. And the proof of that is the fact that every English Bible before the King James, remember, you know, if you've seen the, our film New World Order Bible versions where we go through all those translations that lead up to the King James, they all use Easter like 10 or 20 times. They'll, they'll, they'll talk about, you know, uh, the Easter lamb as being the, instead of where the King James would say Passover lamb, all the old Bibles would say Easter lamb. Because Passover was a new word that was invented by William Tyndale. And before that, Passover was always just called Easter in all the old Bibles. And even in Tyndale's Bible, he uses the word Easter, I think, 22 times in the New Testament. So the word Easter here is referring to unleavened bread. Now, you, if you just look at the context, it's obvious that that's what Easter is referring to. But anybody who doubts that and wants to think this is some pagan festival, all they have to do is look it up in the Matthew Bible, the Coverdale Bible, the Tyndale Bible, and look up the word Easter and see that it's referring to Passover like 20 sometimes. Okay, so it's just, it's just ignorance that would say, oh, this is, a, this is Herod celebrating a pagan holiday. No, this is Herod trying to please the Jews. Right. When he killed James, the brother of John, he saw it pleased the Jews. So he wants to kill Peter also. Well, if he's trying to please the Jews, he doesn't want to kill them during their holiday. He wants to wait till their holiday's over, then kill them and get maximum, you know, bonus points with his constituency, as politicians do. That's the goal. That's what he's trying to do here. Now you say, well, why would the Bible use the word Easter just in this one place instead of Passover? You know, why'd the King James translators do that? If they translated that same Greek word as Passover everywhere else, why did they use Easter here? Because basically they're using Easter here, number one, to refer to the whole week. And number two, they're using Easter because this is after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, so they're just not acknowledging Passover anymore in that sense, okay? Now, the thing about it is, uh, the people who are wrong on this will try to say things like, well, you know, the Bible never calls the Feast of Unleavened Bread, never calls the whole week Passover. Well, that's easy to prove false, because in Luke 22, 1, it says, the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. <laughs> okay, that was simple. The Bible says in John chapter 6, verse 4, and the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. Now look, the book of John is written after the resurrection of Christ, long after, and it's describing the events in the life of Christ, and it speaks to the reader that it's talking to, which is people of the world, of all nations and tongues, and saying to them, oh, let me explain to you what the Passover is, the feast of the Jews. Now look, if that was a feast that we are supposed to be uh, keeping today, the 14th day of the month Abib, if we're supposed to be on a Hebrew calendar and blowing the trumpet on the new moon and looking for that 14th day after the new moon, then why in the world does the book of John say, oh, Passover, that's a feast of the Jews? Yeah. Yeah. Because you have to understand,